Hey. Also incredibly young to have this responsibility. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm a lot older than you think. <laughs> um, let's start off and, 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 and talk about, you know, the, the business world has been on to design thinking for a while, and, and thanks in part to Business Week back in 2004, 5, 6, talking about things like the MFA is the new MBA. Um, so design thinking isn't a new thing to at least some business. Um, but where are we at now? Have, have we hit design thinking fatigue? No, I, I think, look, that one, when we talk about business, I think it's important for everything you talk about today, you know, business isn't monolithic. And there are certain businesses sure. that have already moved post to design thinking. Uh, technology businesses, you know, it's very common. Uh, your technologists, your designers, it's, a, it's an integrated process. We've all read about it. We all know about it. Um, there are other businesses that are just waking up to it. Um, and it, it really depends on what your output is. But w one way to sort of judge how business and design are moving is that, at least anecdotally, I see less unintentionally ugly stuff, right? Like those colossal hey. accidents that you would sometimes wander by as a, as a retail shop or something. There seems to be a little bit less of that. There's much more imitative stuff going on. Um, but I do think that there are certain pockets where people really have advanced. And, and part of it's not just limited to design. There's been so much disruption in the last 15 years. Uh, you know, technologists, coders, project managers, there are businesses that have been really good at figuring out that basically you need to flatten out as much as possible, allow those people with multiple skill sets to get together and advance your business. And there are others that really are having a tough time. Well, and so do you have advice for the businesses that are having a tough time? Like, what is it that they're missing, or what's the toughest part of the time they're having? The, the toughest part is giving up territory, right? I mean, you, you build your business, and it really doesn't matter whether you're a law firm, whether you're a technology business. You build your business yeah. based on your ability to get some space and make yourself, uh, you know, whether it's a cog, whether it's something bigger, to have that territory that you're responsible for. And it can be very challenging to get people to give that territory up. And when we came into Business Week, when Bloomberg bought it, uh, December 2009, you know, I'd worked at Time for 10 years. And basically, the Time process is an ancient process in which the writers write to the editors, who then hand it to the designers. And at the end, when the thing is published, is the first time they might all go over it together. One of the first things we did is sit editors and designers next to each other. And so if you look at our office, it basically looks like we took buildings from the Upper West Side and Williamsburg and put them next to each other. And it can be very interesting to see. But you get this incredible level of efficiency where you know, an editor may come at a story and say, oh, we're going to need 800 words to do this. A designer can read it and say, you need no words at all. And that interaction is now built into it. It was three awful weeks of uh, everyone thinking their jobs were never going to be the same and it would be awful. And on the fourth week, it turned out fine. Nice. That's reassuring. And uh, this idea of getting dissimilar people, to multidisciplinary teams together is so obvious in some industries like tech. Um, it's funny to hear uh, how transformational it is in a, a different industry. You've been charged to sort of reinvigorate all of Bloomberg's properties, Business Week being one. Tell us a little bit about the other lessons you're learning about that process and that journey. Well, I mean, one thing about the media business right now is that the good isn't going to cut it. We have so much stuff. It's such a great time to be a consumer of media and a consumer of news. You know, I, I, can't, I just literally, I do not have enough time in the day to read our own great stuff, let alone our own competitors. We're just producing more. The challenge is that our expectations are that everything we read, everything we watch, had better be pretty fucking great. Because my time is pretty essential. And so good doesn't cut it. And one of the ways in which you can get at that challenge is to incorporate design. And I'm talking about television as well. You know, on TV, the great success, if you watch The Daily Show, and I'm sure a number of you do, or watch it on YouTube, or you know, when it gets sent to you, one of the great hidden successes of The Daily Show is the use of the visual joke. They have great graphics and great designers. Jon Stewart is often looking directly at the camera and, and playing straight, and the over-the-shoulder graphic is making the joke. Often so, about him. Often about him. But the two things right. have to work together. And so, while that's not what we would call beautiful design, it is absolutely part of their process. So as I think about our television network uh, and how we want to change it and, and reinvent it, a lot of those same things are going on. How do you use all the space? How do you have someone who's actually designing the visual experience? So we, we're incorporating into everything we do. 
Do you see a, a like reinvention and a reemergence of long form journalism? Yeah, I, th I think that has happened, um, and I would say sometimes to a fault that um, in readers' minds often length connotes importance um, because we're asking for your time. We're telling you this thing, this experience you're about to have is going to be worth 20, 30 minutes. I think in some ways we've, we've abused that. Um, what we discovered is that people will read long on the web, and so everybody was like, this is amazing. My stuff is important. And we kind of reached peak long form. I love Grantland, but I think um, 5,000 words on the Seattle Seahawks zone defense is like, hey, guys, chill out. That may be a little much. Um, I'm reading, I'm reading uh, TV episode capsules that are longer than it would take me to watch the TV show in question. And so I think there is a little bit of an abuse of the form, which is common. I mean, we're, we're all so exuberant about these new tools, um, but it'll level out. Well, so I look at things like um, John Oliver's Last Week Tonight, where this isn't the video snippet, the, the one and a half minute. This isn't the Twitter version. This is eight to 12 to sometimes 15 minutes that is captivating storytelling that goes deep. And so we've, we've sort of been through this decade or, or more of shallow, 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 fast, fast, fast. And it seems like there's an opening now for if we reconsider what deep news reporting or description is, there's an audience for that. Well, I, I think it's important to remind ourselves that you know, the thing that you are holding and are basically building the entire day around yeah. is what, seven years old? About? Seven, seven years old. Yeah. So we, in, in human history, we've had seven years to uh, a, basically accommodate all of our previous behaviors. So all this stuff is so new. And so when we say there's this sort of emergence of depth, there's still plenty of the shallow. But what I think people are getting used to is that we're beginning to see some leveling off in behavior. We're beginning to understand how to use these amazing new tools. And design has been a very important part in giving people the cues about how to use it. And you know, it's sort of a little bit of an underrated bit of media history. But it used to be that you just never scrolled. If you're in the media business, everybody knows there was something called the fold people on your won't scroll, And the fold was death. AOL. You, you know, people, you, people, journalists used to complain, my story's below the digital fold. No one will ever see it. And, you know, they're kind of right. Yeah. So then you get tablets. But really, the first thing that actually got people to do this was Tumblr. And so it's amazing how fast in three years we have gone. Now that's all we do is like toilet paper rolls. It, it's exactly right. And, it's, <laughs> and, and that, was a, that was a triumph of design, which actually solved this problem, which was you, had, you could go forever. You had an infinite publishing platform and no one would go below. And all of a sudden, somebody had a really nice experience. And now we're designing these endless perpetual scrolls. Everything that is old is new again. Yes. Uh, I want to switch gears really quickly. And that is, um, in this community, we, we've been talking about humani uh, humanism already this morning. In this community, we have a set of values that uh, really favor the qualitative. And we tend to get really weirded out when the conversation is all about the quantitative. Functional value, financial value. What about emotions? What about meaning? What about values and identity? Because that's what we uh, view. That a lot of what the products of what we create are on that qual side, not the quant side. Our business peers have spent 70 years building sophisticated tools to deal with the quant. How do we bridge that divide? Well, I, I think, again, it's, it comes down to a definition of business as a whole. There are certainly businesses that are just industrialized and mechanized to a point that the more you crank out, the more you make. As it turns out, it's very challenging to turn yeah. those businesses into, into qualitative businesses, with one exception that we all have in our pockets, which is Apple makes eight products. And so they have shown that it's doable. It takes a lot of courage, but more importantly, it takes kind of perfect products. I will say that this is not unique to designers. Um, journalists have the same issue, yeah. which is we all make stuff because we want it to be remembered. And when you're competing with hundreds of millions of stories being published in a given week, it's very dispiriting. And so some of this is about the market. And you know, on, on, on my teams, we want salespeople who can actually go out there and tell advertisers it's about engagement, it's about the time they spend with it. Challenge for a salesperson. If any of you are salespeople, have a great day, OK? Good luck. It's really hard out there. But you do see the beginning of this opening, where the qualitative in journalism and design really does begin to have meanings in people's lives. And look, I, I have struggled with this more than anybody. I went from a 
packaged weekly magazine that was an American institution to the creation of a bunch of digital platforms where the goal was really churn, churn, churn. And now I'm in this constant struggle between relevance and meaning, as we all are. Ultimately, you got to have some faith that your own behavior is predictive, and you got to believe it's a meritocratic world. And if you don't, I don't know how you get up every day and make great stuff. So I think those are things that, that bond not just designers and journalists, but a lot of people. As, as Douglas was saying earlier, these are the people we need to ally with. Yeah, they're the people we need to ally with, but, but I also think it's, it's the people who you need to impress with your best work. And it, the reason that I'm excited every day with increasing challenges to go out and make stuff is that best work wins. I, I just haven't seen many examples where the best thing fails. And great things rarely do. So there's a lot that you can control even in a marketplace that is really often confusing. I, I, it, this is going to be the theme for the next two days. Just when the conversation gets good, we're sort of need to move on. So I, I like the fact that you end, ended on best work wins. That's a great, a great thing that's sort of self-affirming for our, our community. And I want to thank you for coming out here. And hopefully, come find him at the break. Hopefully, you're here for the break at least. And uh, continue the conversation in person. My pleasure. OK, thank Thanks. you. Josh.